The year is 2035. Social distancing is still in full effect, not out of necessity, but out of choice. An entire generation of teenagers has seen more anime faces than human ones. The new president has declared the USA a protectorate of Atlantis. A talking dog is the Japanese prime minister. Climate change has been fixed and there are no more wars, obviously. 99% of the world's GDP goes directly to super chats. And all in all, everyone's pretty happy with how things are going. Or else they get eaten by sharks. So it's exactly as voluntary as what we have now. Speaking of, 2020 is when now actually is. And the beautiful future I just painted in your mind is but one possibility of many laid out before us. Its potential cause? The precipitous rise to prominence of VTubers, which I predicted in my Kizuna Eye video three years ago, hence why you should believe in everything I just said without question. Though, honestly, even I never could have guessed how far this whole thing would come, especially over this last year. Kizuna's just another face in the crowd now, albeit a pretty big one that's on a lot of billboards and televisions, but her charming outbursts of English profanity have been superseded in our collective culture by and there are plenty of VTube streamers who rival and even surpass her viewership now, and more and more viewers every day are falling past her into the bottomless abyss of hollow lives, Niji Sanjis, smaller agencies, and the endlessly swelling horde of indies that awaits down the rabbit hole. Virtual YouTubers are the new apex predator of the streaming ecosystem, and pretty much everyone I know is eager to welcome our new anime overlords. I know I am, but I don't fully know why I am, so today I'm going to take a crack at figuring out what's so special about this whole VTube thing, especially the Hollow Live girls, since they're who I'm most familiar with. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community where creators of all skill levels can well, it's kind of right there in the name. Between potential quarantines and winter vacation, a lot of us have a lot of free time on the horizon, and that's time that can be well spent paying artistic tribute to these virtual idols. And whether you're looking to immortalize your favorite VTubers in fan art, cut together a compilation of their funniest moments, animate one of those moments for extra hilarity, or remix their songs into new and funky forms, Skillshare is the place to go to learn how to do it. For instance, if you want to compete in Calliope Mori's next remix contest, DJ King Arthur's course, Remixing Dance Music, Digital Production Basics, can help you figure out how to get the killer mashup of your dreams out of your head and into your headphones. And it'll teach you how to get it into other headphones, too, with a whole section on sharing and legality in case you want to leverage those skills toward making music of your own someday. No matter what your field, whether you're a professional looking to up your game or an aspiring creator wondering where to start it, Skillshare has a class for you, taught by experts. And they're always launching new premium courses, so you always have new places to go on your creative journey. There is a lot to choose from, but they keep the site curated with education in mind, meaning there are no ads to get in your way, and it still costs less than 10 bucks a month with an annual subscription. But if you act now, you won't even have to pay for that up front. The first thousand people to sign up at the link in the doobly-doo will get a free trial of their premium membership so you can start learning the skills you need to appease your new anime gods and explore your creativity today. Perhaps I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, though. After all, some of you are likely here wondering what the big deal with VTubers even is, and why your fealty to them is both necessary and good in the first place. Why are they so popular all of a sudden? Well, that much isn't hard to figure out. VTubers have been around for years, and it's no coincidence that 2020 was the year of their ascension. You know, on account of the thing. A lot of people have been stuck inside, seeing less and less of their family and friends, especially the far-off ones they only get to see at cons, and more and more of their TVs and computer screens. And while believe me, I have tried, man cannot live on video games and anime alone. We need human contact, or at least an anime facsimile thereof, playing video games. As Yazzy said in our last podcast, being in the chat of a big VTuber can feel oddly similar to the sense of anonymous inclusion you get wandering around a con or sitting in on a panel. For folks with social anxiety especially, there's something really 
cozy about being alone in a crowd like that, where you can exist, express yourself, and participate in something without being really noticed, you know? Of course, in theory, any kind of streamer could fill that void, but VTubers have a particular appeal that sets them apart. They're anime, and anime is inherently cooler than real life. Also, less real, which can help a lot with the anxiety. Where your typical Twitch affiliate seeks to create a vibe akin to hanging out with your gaming buddy, VTube streams, especially collabs, tend to better resemble the slice-of-life atmosphere of a moe after-school club, which can be easy to misconstrue, just like moe club shows themselves are. From the outside looking in, it can look an awful lot like nerds simply simping for their 2D crushes. And that is definitely a factor in the success of both things, especially when it comes to super chats and character merch. But we watch Moe Slice of Life stuff for reasons beyond seeing cute blobs jiggling. For most people, the true appeal of these shows and these streamers lies in seeing fun, larger-than-life personalities have fun doing fun things. It's escapism at its simplest and most joyous, here made interactive and immediate which is not as easy as you might think. If you're not already into VTube, it's important to understand that these live 2D avatars are more than just filters over your standard face cam shenanigans. They're full-featured digital puppets controlled by the streamer's expressions and a few hotkeys, and the top Hololive VTubers, Gura and Korone, are both really good at exaggerating those expressions and their movements to make those puppets feel alive. Successful VTubers also give their all to the vocal side of the performance to imbue their characters with more, well, character. It takes a high base level of talent, an ability to improvise, and a keen sense of comedic timing to do this job well. Have confidence. No confidence. These exaggerated, animated personalities give each VTuber and the communities surrounding them a distinct vibe. And with the wide variety of characters out there, it's all but guaranteed that basically any potential viewer will find at least one channel they can vibe with that they look even a little bit. A lot of folks enjoy the chaotic, shitposty Bart Simpson energy of Gura's streams, some prefer the laid-back, soothing atmosphere of Ina's drawing sessions, and others deeply appreciate Amelia's patented blend of real gamer skill and real gamer toxicity. It looks like they're gonna try to go for the hunt and not for the kill, because what's the point? They already won the game. Planted. Oh, it looks like they are gonna go for the plant, even though it's pretty much in the bag for them. No oh. use plant even needed, that's right. Gonna take out the sofa, what a surprise! My brain is melting. That's okay. last player standing. Yeah, I'm done. Personally, I just appreciate no longer being the worst chess player on anime YouTube. Also, she's definitely got the best taste in anime and manga out of the Hollow Myth squad. I'm talking Mob Psycho, Made in Abyss, The Promised Neverland, Decadence. Between Bubba and Pipe, that's some seriously good taste in dogs, too. Kiara's probably got her beaten JRPG taste, though, and her open, positive personality mixes well with basically everyone she collabs with and makes it a lot of fun to watch her fail and learn in games on her own. Kali uh, does a lot of that, too, with her own upbeat attitude, though I think most people appreciate her attitude and beats in a different context. It's trapped in the stasis, I hate this. I haven't taken a life in like ages. Okay, this is heinous, but wait, look at me now. I'm trying to get souls, and I just found out how. Put up a shroud, string to the crowd, play the game, and the viewers could bow. There is something for pretty much everyone between the five of them, and definitely everyone when you add the dozens upon dozens of Japanese and foreign streamers under the Hollow Live banner and beyond it. If you want to revel in the simple joy of retro gaming, it is hard to resist Korone's enthusiasm. If you like clowning around, or whole damn circusing around, as it were, then Polka's zany gaming streams will delight you. It is especially fun to watch her play Among Us because she just constantly seems like she's up to something, she's got a bad case of resting sus face. On the other hand, Pekora actually is constantly up to something, and everyone around her knows it, which you'd think would undermine her mischief, but she knows how to turn that suspicion to her advantage. She's a master of psychological warfare. <laughs> Where 
雪山ペーカーペーカーペーカーペコ先生頑張れよ VR ほら楽しみにしてるペコだからねペーカーペーカーペーカーうるせえくっもう最悪だ It's really hard not to get attached to a favorite or two if you spend any amount of time watching these girls stream. Though it's worth noting that there are a lot of fun, underappreciated personalities on the male Hollow Stars side of this as well. Robaru the bartender has a pure direct charm that makes his English Among Us streams a lot of fun, and I deeply, deeply relate to his undying thirst for Pyra in Xenoblade 2. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> On that note, there is a practical benefit to the wide range of VTubers beyond appealing to a broad audience. It makes it easy to avoid whatever aspects of the larger community don't appeal to you. Most VTubers sit in a comfortable PG middle ground between all ages and adult-oriented content where they can traffic in innuendo and double entendres for the sake of humor without doing anything suggestive enough to make anyone who's not really here for that feel uncomfortable. Of course, we are talking about anime girls on the internet. Some people are absolutely here for that. And some of those people might be inclined to push that through thirst chatting on viewers and streamers who aren't, which is where more uh, overt creators like Hollow Lives Marine come in. Sancho! Ahoy! Ahoy! How are ya? I'm Honey! They give the viewers who are, whoa, actually horny, a place to congregate, express themselves, share fan art, and mingle with their own kind, an outlet, if you will. And when these streamers take part in collabs, they can serve as the butt of the others go to jail for horny crimes jokes, subtly setting boundaries for anyone who finds a new favorite through the collaboration. It helps quite a bit that respecting these boundaries seems to be more or less the norm among VTube viewers when the opposite is so often the case in the world of streaming and parasocial relationships at large. It is all too common for fans of online personalities to become over familiar with their faves and expect really unfair things of them, but VTube avatars serve as an additional barrier between creator and audience, and in general fans discourage each other from trying to break through that. Even if the true identity of a VTuber's soul is more or less an open secret, it is generally taboo to bring it up in public. I don't know if that's motivated by real respect on every fan's part per se. I think it's more likely that some of them just don't want others breaking the illusion of the character for them, but the result is positive either way. Obsessive, possessive, intrusive fans are pushed to the fringes of the community, where usually they can do less harm. And I think because everyone's already invested in playing along with the character, they're a little more inclined to play along with other rules as well. That's not to say the VTube community is free of toxicity or disrespect, ho ho, ha ha, it is to laugh, but in general, the atmosphere is a lot more positive and inviting than most online spaces I've been in, at least when it comes to big, officially sanctioned streamers. It can be rough for independent creators who don't have a big audience or an agency to back them up, but even then, the community is keen to welcome new voices and push back against the small but vocal minority of gatekeeping assholes at its periphery. From chumbuds to deadbeats, most VTube fans are united by a drive to protect and support. By its very nature, this new interactive medium widens the gap between performer and persona without making the audience feel detached from either. And I find that layer of commonly accepted unreality makes certain enduringly popular game commentary genres a lot more enjoyable, at least for me. Take horror games. It is just plain fun to watch people wander nervously through dark hallways and get jump scared, but most of these games leverage tropes and follow patterns that get 
old after a while. You become desensitized to these kinds of scares over time, and when real 3D streamers make them their bread and butter, it gradually becomes harder and harder to believe that their reactions are completely genuine. They know you're here to watch them panic and make loud noises, and of course they're gonna give the people what they want, they are entertainers. And a lot of people enjoy that, but for me, it kinda takes me out of it. In my eyes, those performative overreactions just fit larger-than-life characters like Okayu, Pekora, or Gura a lot better. You're already primed to expect them to perform. Screams that would sound obnoxious coming from a real human being still sound pretty obnoxious, honestly, but they feel like something an anime girl would naturally do. And thanks to the collaborative nature of this whole enterprise, you do also get some very genuine reactions when they drag their less brave friends into a multiplayer spook em up. But it's another age-old gaming staple, Minecraft roleplay, that benefits the most from the suspension of disbelief VTubers encourage. I have never been able to get into this kind of content before. As someone who waxes poetic about anime on the internet, I am in no position to call anything cringy, but in-character Minecraft gameplay just doesn't sit right with me, unless it involves VTubers. There's a powerful appeal in seeing all of these characters I enjoy inhabit a persistent, shared space. It's a solid compromise between my craving for continuity and my desire to switch my brain off with truly pointless entertainment. And because I've already bought into their performance, I'm not put off when they break into skits or play along with pranks that wouldn't really make sense if I thought too hard about them. I know these things aren't problems for everyone. We are talking about two of the most popular YouTube gaming content formats ever here. But for me, as someone whose interest in Minecraft has only ever extended to crazy redstone builds, it's exciting to have that barrier finally broken down. And it's not just the new to me stuff that's more exciting when VTubers do it. Their crazy personalities make Among Us collabs endlessly fun, and even games I've played and seen played a million times over, like Super Mario Bros. and Banjo-Kazooie, somehow feel fresh and fun again in the hands of Korone and, well, mostly Korone. I don't know, man, there's just something about her simple, universal expressions of delight, exhilaration, and frustration that just brings me right back to discovering these games for the first time as a kid. She just really gets video games, you know? Her enthusiasm is infectious and clearly authentic, even if it is being channeled through a convincing performance as an aggressively excitable cartoon dog. Actually, that might be part of the nostalgia trip, too. I can't be the only one who gets, like, soft Scooby-Doo vibes from Korone, can I? Can't you just see her going, <laughs> Which I guess would make Okayu shaggy? Pekora's gotta be Fred, you know, traps and all that. Hachima's scrappy, obviously, and well, that's about as far as I've thought this out, but maybe someone out there will do something amazing with that scrap of a terrible idea. It's not out of the question for the VTube community at all. New and wonderful cartoons, compilations, remixes, and illustrations inspired by these characters pop up all over the internet every single day. These girls are inspiring creators of every stripe to express themselves, and the quality and quantity of fun, beautiful, hilarious, original, and remixed content coming out of this fanbase is nothing short of inspiring. I mean, shoot, just look at all the reinterpretations of that one Ecom Bokum cartoon. It's so cool seeing a whole community of artists bouncing off each other like this. It feels like a more internationally accessible version of the Vocaloid community. And there are even some Miku Miku dance animators putting their considerable talents to use in this space to great effect. 
Of course, I can't talk about fan creators without acknowledging the immense contributions that fan subbers have made to VTube as an international community. Before Hololive English was even a thing, these guys made it possible, almost single-handedly, for the rest of us to be VTube fans at all. And even as the international market has grown and become more accessible, their creative editing and subtitling choices have ensured that their compilations and clips remain distinct enjoyable in their own right, even if you're tuning into streams daily. You know, it's one thing to watch Pekora deceive and betray her friends live, it's another to enjoy the highlights with the correct combo inputs for her laughs annotated on screen. I don't think the community would be anywhere near this vibrant and alive if VTubers weren't so enthusiastic about encouraging their fans to create like this. All of them share fan art, edits, and animations on Twitter, and some do entire streams focusing on fan creations. Calliope's remix party, where she spotlighted the 10 best remixes of her debut single, provided a substantial buff to our driving playlist, and even taught me a thing or two about music production. That's the other thing. Many of the Hololive girls bring some serious artistic talents to the mix themselves, beyond the baseline that it takes to bring their avatars to life, I mean. As a hundred thousand plus people found out live not long ago, Gura's got some serious pipes on her. <laughs> And Ina, for her part, is an exceptional illustrator. Also, her dad jokes are second to none. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, late. I'm Ina. <laughs> I don't want to discredit Amelia's gaming skills and showmanship, or Kiara's ability to get other streamers to open up. Everyone in the Hololive stable is talented in their own right. But of course, practiced artists are going to better appreciate the work that fans put into their own art and understand the satisfaction those fans get from making it. And that understanding created one of my favorite moments in Hololive history. I've also heard that a lot of people have been picking up drawing again or picking up their hobbies again after watching my stream. And uh... I'm sorry. <laughs> it really makes me happy because that's one of the biggest reasons I wanted to do. Well, I wanted to become a VTuber. There is nothing quite like being told that your art has inspired someone else to create and express themselves. In that clip, you can see in real time a real person's life changing for the better, not just in a material, lots of super chats sort of way, but on a powerful, personal, emotional level, even behind an anime puppet. I don't want to psychoanalyze anyone too much here, but that seems to be something that Ina's in this for, making that connection with her audience and fellow streamers. She even tells her fans to save their super chat money so they can rent movies for watch-alongs, which is just super cool. Despite the built-in distance between performer and persona, in these long, improvised broadcasts, it is inevitable that the authentic human being behind the VTuber bleeds through. And in a way, it can feel even more real than a real person just being themselves in front of a webcam all the time. Like, by adding the filters of the avatar and the performance, you take away some of the more deeply ingrained subconscious filters that govern how we all interact. Korone definitely plays up her attachment to Okayu as a bit. <laughs> <laughs> 
but there's clearly a genuine friendship underpinning that kayfabe. When Korone talks about how good Okayu is at reaching out to her and helping when she's feeling down, and when Okayu relates anecdotes about Korone getting a bit clingy with offering her drinks as a house guest, it's just so personal and specific and relatable. I don't know, it makes me feel really happy. Though not quite as happy as watching them and Mio be happy for a teary-eyed Fubuki when she hit a million subs live on stream. <laughs> For all that we joke and joke about simping for 2D waifus, I think it's those human moments that draw most of us to VTubers and keep us coming back. They give people something personal to connect to, and without that connection, VTubers lose a lot of their magic. There's a reason Kizuna Ai isn't at the forefront of this conversation anymore, the multiple AI project. Activate, the suits who own her image, tried to duplicate Kizuna, creating different versions of the AI idol with different voices and designs, perhaps simply a measure to reduce the original's workload and sustain the brand if something happened to her, though suspicions began swirling that their true aim was to reduce her control over her character. Either way, it backfired. For those who weren't super invested in Kizuna already, the change in direction made her seem less and less like a character and more and more like a brand. And for those who were invested, the perceived slight against the soul of their favorite online persona didn't go over super well. Streams began hemorrhaging viewers, speculation about the issue was banned from chat, and in an effort to salvage things, Activate eventually created a new, dedicated management agency, Kizuna Eye Inc., with her officially revealed original voice actress, Nozomi Kasuga, serving in a highly publicized advisory role. The lesson is clear. Being virtual does not make VTubers replaceable. Acting like the actor behind them is irrelevant does just as much to break the parasocial spell as calling too much attention to them. And more importantly, it takes away the fans' motivation to support them. VTubing allows people who might be self-conscious or anxious or for some other reason averse to streaming on camera to break out of their shell, find an audience, and maybe even make a living in a way that wasn't possible for them before. And it feels really good to be a part of that, even if it's just as a spectator. Though, of course, a lot of folks are going to feel compelled to contribute more directly, be it financially or creatively, in the form of a super chat, an illustration, or an overlong video essay. It also feels good, of course, to connect with other people who appreciate the same stuff you do. I've put my feelings about VTubers out there now, but this phenomena transcends language, culture, and nationality, so I know there are a million perspectives on it that I've never even considered, and I'd love to hear your perspective in the comments below. While you're at it, if you'd consider checking out one of my other video essays about less interactive anime before you dive back into the endless ocean of VTube content, I'd appreciate that too. I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement.